Hello, it's Mike coming at you with another Planet Coaster Park Spotlight. Thank you for joining me. Welcome to the video and welcome to King Planko's Castle, created by Welfare. Now, I am super excited to have a special guest with me once again. Now, there are some that say that Elon Musk approached him the other day, looking at buying his channel, but when he refused, he just had to go and buy Twitter instead. I have Michael from <laughs> MJ Games. Hello, Michael. How are you doing? Oh, man. If, if only that were true. My goodness. Um, I would... Uh... Um, I don't know if I'd be doing some YouTube right now. I might be out <laughs> traveling the world, man. <laughs> You'd I mean, be up what, in the Caribbean could... somewhere with Gosh. a cocktail. <laughs> I mean, forty-four b uh, billion dollars was that it, or something like that? Well, like no, small, change. small change, small yeah. change. I'd rather Chump do YouTube. Change. Yeah, yeah. I'd Although turn Elon that Musk down somehow, well. <laughs> somehow the Elon Musk that is like pocket change. So that's kind of crazy. <laughs> But this is a PlayStation 5 park. It's the second park that we've looked at by Welfare. The first of which me and Michael did as well, so I'll leave the link down below. But the description for this park reads, King Planko was a great king who treated all his subjects with love and had built a mighty castle where everyone was happy until one day an evil witch arrived with her three dragons, as you do. I love this. We've got a whole story here. <laughs> uh, during a yep. battle that almost lasted a week, one of the dragons was captured, but sadly the king lost his life during the fight. Oh my god, that got well dark. Without the great king, the witch and her remaining two dragons laid waste to the castle and took over the neighbouring lands to the east, while pirates have now taken over the lands to the west. Everything in this park was created from scratch. There was music, effects and lighting everywhere so it could be viewed day or night. The dark would ride us some time machine and trigger set. Fountain shows every two hours. Please rate and enjoy. I mean, this is a whole full-blown story. This is like Lord of the Rings we've got here. So yeah, super excited to get into this one. So without further ado, let's Let's hop in and have a look around, shall we? So, here we are at the park entrance. Are you excited, Michael? Oh, absolutely. And um, we see some of the some of the guests having trouble getting through the entrance there. It's always funny when you see little glitches happen. <laughs> it's just like like there was literally no wall there or anything, and they just couldn't, <laughs> couldn't walk. <laughs> but no, yeah, really, really excited. Um, just because the, just from the first outlook, like the last park we looked at together was all about realism and almost like a very American Cedar Fair Six Flags style park. Yeah. Whereas this one is about more theming. So I'm really, really excited to see the difference in how he builds in this park. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that's one thing, isn't it? When I spotlight parks by the same creators, I do often say that I can tell it's the same person because they'll have a similar style, whereas Welfare has done the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't get any more different to the last park if you tried. The, like you said, the last park was going for realism. There was things in that park that we'd seen that I'd never seen before in a spotlight and just some great touches of realism. And then this time he's completely thrown realism out the window and gone for witches, dragons, pirates. You couldn't get any more different, could you? So, mm -hmm. yeah. so anyway, let's go left and let's go up to Port Royal. So, okay. I like this. I like the use of, I love it when you kind of like just people use the weeds like this. So it's the green leafy mm -hmm. bushes and they just put them at the side of paths and at the side of buildings. And like, it just gives such a good weed effects. And then especially with the, um, um, the, but, 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 um like the dry weeds, them ones. Right. Yeah. Well. Just gives such yep, a totally great agree. effect. So, Maddie, before we go any further, I got a question for you. Is the What's reason that? why is the reason why you and Tommy and Plip always go left because in the UK you drive on the wrong side of the road, so on the left side? Is that the is that the reason we always naturally go to the left? I'm trying to think <laughs> of a quick, witty, sarcastic answer, but nothing is coming quick enough, so I'm just going to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are literally one of the only countries in the world that drive on the left as well and i don't know why because like even the rest of europe if you go over like if you go through the um yep. the tunnel the euro tunnel to france mm -hmm. you get to france and then you drive on the opposite side of the road so it yeah. literally makes zero sense why we drive on the left when everybody else in the world drives on the right but then yeah. again we use we uh use the obviously the metric system and america doesn't you're one of the yeah, only countries we, we, in the world that don't use the metric system. 
Yeah, I don't understand why we don't, but... I think there's like I three guess... countries in the world that don't, and America's one of them. Yes, yeah, that's very strange, for sure. I just remember the first time being in Europe, I was... Um, long plane flight, we got in the cab, and I kind of freaked out when all of a sudden we were on the wrong side <laughs> of the road because I hadn't slept on the plane, and so that was quite a... Um, quite a different thing but back to this park so far i mean it definitely feels very piratey so i think they've oh, yeah. done a good job of capturing that vibe for sure yeah 100 percent. i love all the use of the foliage as well as we've just come up mm -hmm. the only thing i'm kind of thinking is as we came up through here i'm thinking is there other different ways as well because for me that just seems like a little bit of a bottleneck especially yeah, if you're, you're imagining right. like a busy day if you're imagining like hundreds of people coming i mean there's that way as well but would people automatically go that way if people come into the park with a ride in mind like okay i'm coming and straight away i know i want to go on that and like half of the guests come this way you've got to imagine that they're going to bottleneck through here now hmm. are we just getting a little bit picky because obviously this park has not gone for realism so am i just being a little bit pedantic most likely to be honest so. <laughs> But I, yeah. lo I love the features of this. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, Welfare. I'm going to be 100% brutally honest. Before we started the spotlight, I was just talking to Michael. And I said, I'm not sure about this park in comparison to your last one. Because, of course, your last one was going for realism. And I'd seen so many things I'd never seen before. I said, I'm not sure what I'm going to think of this one. Now, I've, 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 of course, I'd gone through like kind of a quick overview before we'd come in in depth. But now we're actually on the ground floor and looking around. It's super impressive. And I take back mm -hmm. what I was actually thinking. My initial gut thoughts were wrong because your detailing is fantastic. It's spot on just with all the foliage and all the building works, like kind of just all this detailing on this building here. Now, that's an in-game yeah. blueprint, but then stuff added to it. So... Yeah, I totally agree. Um, it definitely is very, very immersive into the theme, which is what I like. Um, so it's very, very well done. Yeah, I mean, certainly like kind of when you do the pirate themes as well and things like that, it's quite easy to do an overhead shot and think, well, I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. Because especially when you start using like kind of like these like these wooden pieces and that castle piece it can start blending into other parks as well and it's like well do you know what i've seen that before and then it's only when you get down to the ground level and you start looking at a little bit more of the detailing and the foliage work and the paint tool that you actually realize do you know what this is actually really good so yeah despite the fact that i've done over 100 spotlights now and i should know better i still made a snap judgment as i had a <laughs> overhead look at the park so anyway Apologies out the way. Let's have a look at this. What have we got here? So we've got Lockjaw's Voyage. With it being a cascade, it's not green across the board, so to be expected. G-Force is really good, though, so let's go for a ride. Enjoy, everybody.
so there we have Lockjaw's Voyage. So, Michael, what were your thoughts on that? Well, I thought it was good. Um, I mean, it was a longer ride, but I think it really fit for the style that it was because it was almost like it was a cross between like a coaster and a log flume, right? Because sometimes you see these cascade coasters that don't really have that much of the actual log flume type aspect to it. But this was really good because it had a lot of, um, you know, just kind of chill aspects to it and then some really smooth coaster aspects. So that's one of my favorite cascade coasters I've seen. Yeah, I, I think that was absolutely brilliant as well. A really nice blend of everything, a good mixture of the two. It was a little bit on the long side, but at no time was mm -hmm. I bored. So sometimes, like when you do the log flumes and the river rapids and the cascades, they do run the risk of being overly long and you can lose interest. But that one was long, but at no point did I lose interest. So yeah, great job. Some great uh, theming all the way around as well. Yeah, really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. So great job. So let's hop out the exit and let's have a walk down here. So, um, again, some really nice theming. I just love all the foliage work as well. Just feels so engrossed. Oh, I can see Tommy's favorite ride. There we go. Got a whirly rig over there. Just hidden behind the trees as well. Mm -hmm. Nice and tactful. Let's have a walk around here. What have we got here? So shipwreck. That must be the pirate ship. Must yeah, it must be. be. Oh, hang on. I uh, don't know. I love the queue. It's really nice queue. Really nice theming around it. Mm-hmm. That's not the pirate ship. I feel deceived. <laughs> because I can see the pirate ship over there, and then the shipwreck is that. But it's got the ship on either side, look. Yeah, and that's a good, uh, I guess, good way to use that without feeling like you had to use the pirate ship ride there. Yeah. Very nicely done. And um, what was this over here? Oh, that was the entrance for that. I'm sorry. Just getting a little bit confused. It's just so all close together here. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. Let's just have a little bit of an aerial shot, just so I don't actually get lost, because there's a lot going on in a very small area. So I just want to make sure that I don't miss anything. So we've got the whirly rig over here. I love all this. Is that a log flume? No, or is that... Oh, no, it's one of them boat rides. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you've just got all the rock work here with the waterfall all coming down as well. Really nice use of rock work and foliage around that as well. Yeah, great job. So let's walk down here towards the pirate ship. And we've got a coaster over here, which looks, looks like, like a, a boomerang. boomerang. Yeah. Yep. So I'm, I'm actually starting to learn some of the coasters. So I was doing <laughs> a spotlight the other day, and I was like, I think that's a single rail one. And I looked, and I was right, and I was like, check this kid out and i was like i'm gonna have to tell michael that i'm starting to learn all about coasters mm -hmm. so. yeah now hey what company makes the single rail coasters i no, i, I have literally no clue i haven't got an absolute foggiest rmc R rmc there you go yeah it's yes. the ones that make the they do they also do the hybrid hybrid wooden slash steel coasters so I'm, I keep clicking the rope fence at the minute. Why, how, why am I clicking the rope fence? This is a wonderful station as well, by the way. I'm trying to click on the yeah, ride, it's beautiful. and I haven't even mentioned the station. I love the ropes across oh, the that top. Is so, that's so well done, and then having a little bit of the roses and stuff. Although it's like, I wish the roses in this game were actually like three-dimensional and not two-dimensional, but it does look really good, especially when you're down in the station. Yeah, I've never seen anyone use the ropes as a station Me neither. before. And then he's got the fence piece just turned sideways all the way around as well. Mm -hmm. Just really Very creative. unique, for sure. Yeah, 100%. And the ride is called Shiver Me Timbers. <laughs> what a name, what a name. So it's not quite green across the board, but we'll forgive you for that. G-Force is really nice. So let's go for a ride on this. Enjoy, everybody.
absolutely fantastic. It was exactly what it needed to be for a boomerang coaster and great theming all the way around it i love the features with the rocks how it goes between them it goes over the water i thought the inversions were really nice yeah michael what did you think of that mate yeah um i mean you said everybody's building boomerangs now well obviously that doesn't it's not the same in real life because nobody wants to ride these things anymore <laughs> <laughs> they're so freaking uncomfortable uh, but no like it's really well done because normally you don't see these have kind of in a way go out three times if that makes sense where it's yeah. like you got three kind of portions where the tracks parallel to each other um and you know if you go to that third part that the coaster is about to come back on yeah i feel like that's um you know that is realistic right there even though it might look a little bit different on the ride of having that long straight section because a lot of times when some of these were made back in the day or at least the company that made this did have uh sometimes they will have like longer straight sections in the coaster path um so I think it's really well done, though, and I mean, yeah, you're right about that uh, <laughs> that piece that's a part of the ride. Um, the only thing I would like to see from Welfare is if you're going to have that as part of the ride, create some kind of way to make it look like the employees could get there, right? Um, yeah, if you I look down, that. there's not really there's not a way for employees to get there, or let's let, let's say the ride stalls. In theory, there's not a way for people to evacuate. Yeah, um, that makes so sense. That'd be it's my only that suggestion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. But yeah, great job. So right, let's hop out. I've got the ship that's just there as well. Mm -hmm. So I assume the entrance and the exit for the ship must be kind of like round here somewhere. I'm assuming. It has to be. Yeah, go Oh, I love this little water feature here. That's really nice. Really little quaint little water feature, just tucked away here. Yeah, love that. Yeah, and here's the queue for the pirate ship as well. Again, just a beautifully themed queue, just with the lights and the foliage and the rocks going around it. I wonder if nobody's waiting in line because of how far away the queue is from everything else. Potentially. Yeah, that would make sense. It is a little bit off the beaten path, isn't it? So it's like yeah. where the exit is would maybe make more sense for the queue to be. And I agree, that queue is awesome. Like it's it's really well done, and that uh, that station for that chairlift is awesome as well. Yeah, I really, I really probably should have looked at that a little bit more actually, rather than just come back. Yeah, just with all the ship on top as well. Really mm -hmm. nice. Let's just have a quick look inside as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. And then again, just with the fence pieces and then the scavola on top. Yep. Yeah, very nicely done. Right, so let's hop out down here. And I believe this is most of the pirate side done. So I think, oh no, hang on, we've got the that ride there. And then we'll be heading over more towards the witch side than the, the other fantasy side. So let's mm -hmm. come down here. Love this building here. Yeah, it kind of reminds me in a way, I mean, it's not the same, but when I saw it, it kind of reminded me of the one that you did on that first collab park with um, Jasmine and yeah. Corey, in a way. Like, it's obviously very different, but just the style of it kind of reminded me of what you did there. Yeah, really, it was actually I mean, this making is amazing. me think of, um, I, I cannot remember for the life of me, it was one of the very, very first spotlights that I'd ever done. I mean, you're talking probably in the first five or six. And the creator there had done something like this. And it was actually overlooking a River Rapids. And it was kind of making mm. me think of that. I, I can't remember what it's called. I'm Did sorry, you notice the looks... roof there? Once again, oh, yeah. using those ropes. That, I mean, that just looks so good. It gives a great effect, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Really nice effect. There's just so much going on, if I'm honest. I'm... I'm I'm like literally my eyes are all over the place. I'm trying to not miss anything. I love this Roctopus that's just yes. on the paint tool here. And he's, have you seen how he's used the sand paint tool around? Uh -huh. That That is fantastic. Yeah, it's really well done. And again, great queue line. So, right, <laughs> let's come out here. We walk past the Cosmic Cow. There was so many little paths just going off and so much detailing everywhere. Yeah, I really did make a mistake by prejudging this park before I'd come into it because there's so much going on. It's just beautifully detailed. Mm hmm. Totally agree. Splash zone. <laughs> And he's even put a little viewpoint here as well, just to make sure that the guests actually stop here as well. I like how you that's, can just watch well it go done. underneath as well. Mm-hmm. For sure. Really, really well done. 
Okay, we've got a little seating area just here. And just before we go on to Tidal Wave, we'll just have a quick look up here as well. So a lot of in-game blueprints, but been implemented really nicely as well. Yeah, for sure. There, Maddie. there's your third water feature of the park already. Mate, I'm loving it. I am absolutely in my element. Do you know, I think Welfare was almost trying to appease me or something. Yeah. Maybe maybe this was um maybe this was because he wanted to be the mod for my Discord. So maybe you put all these water features in to get it. That's what it was. Yeah, this next park he's gonna have no water features. No water <laughs> at all. And you're gonna be like, why did I compliment this guy so much? <laughs> so yeah, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, Welfare is in my Discord as well. The Discord link will be down below. But uh Welfare, along with Michael and Tommy CM, are some of the moderators along with Dan's theme park. But yeah, lovely place to be. There's some amazing people in there. Me and Michael were only talking about it early on. It's just such a chill place, isn't it? There's about 130 people now and just just all chilling and chatting, aren't we? So plug, 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 plug. Anyway, let's have a look. I love the station as well again, look. Oh, that's amazing. I love how there's just little planks missing as well. And they're all, they, yeah. that's not copied and pasted as well, look, because all the planks are like different. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, oh gosh, it's really, really well done. I like it. I like how some are spaced out differently. Mm hmm. I mean, that, I mean, that probably took 15, 20 minutes just to, just to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it wasn't, he could have taken the easy route and just copied and pasted it, but he hasn't. Mm hmm. So, right. Um, think because of the length of the spotlight and because that cascade ride was about five minutes long i think we'll just go for an imaginary ride around and have a look look at this how it comes underneath the boomerang yeah that is that's a majestic shot right there that's a beautiful beautiful shot the only thing i'm kind of thinking and again i know you haven't really gone for realism but as you're coming up here you've got people sat in an open boat and then people over the top of them that could just i don't know spit on them or throw things on them mm -hmm. just for like a safety aspect maybe just some kind of like covering there just to think of the guest safety but again i know you haven't gone for ultra realism <laughs> in this park so yeah. well, I, I really should stop trying to give feedback for parks i haven't gone for realism i love this bridge yeah I, I kind of find that hard sometimes to do as well because i'm so caught up on like my like my main feature when i build is like realism and coasters right so yeah. sometimes it's hard to be like oh i want this to be more realistic but then i gotta think not everybody approaches it the same way i do and that's a good thing yeah of course it's a, it's a game as well you yeah. don't need to approach it realism and I'll, I'll be honest i think that is one of my um flaws as a planet coaster spotlighter is i have my own personal preferences <clears throat> and i like mm -hmm. to see realism and maybe sometimes i need to maybe put my own preferences aside and actually think do you know what this creator hasn't gone for realism and they maybe they don't like the realism side of it maybe they've just wanted to go for fun and theming and not thought about like i don't care if this guest has this dropped on their head or something and yeah maybe that's just one of my my little problems as a as a spotlight mm -hmm. and maybe something i need to be more conscious of moving forward look yeah. at us well, growing I mean, michael <laughs> yeah well and another thing too sometimes like when you're spotlighting somebody's park for the first time and whether you've reached out to them or like requested it and you notice like you got some realism tips like i'm almost kind of weary of being like Oh well, I know they're not approaching this as realism because I don't want them to feel like they were like, oh, I thought I was doing stuff that was realistic, and they're just bashing it, you know, as not being realism. So sometimes it's trying to find that balance of like, you know, like not assuming that somebody's trying to approach a park a certain way, you know? Yeah, um, yeah, hundred percent. But definitely. Yeah. So we come down to, I mean, this is making me sad. This is the broken castle. So this is where the king lived before mm. he died. And obviously the dragon that came in and and pillaged it. Just so well done, so well themed. And I think knowing the story as well just really adds to it as well. And I'm like, oh, I kind of like just imagine what it was like before it had been destroyed. 
He should have been stronger. <laughs> <laughs> it's his own fault. He clearly is his own. He should have had his Weetabix. <laughs> if he'd had his Weetabix and been a little bit stronger, then he wouldn't be in this nah. position, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but no, it is. Um, it is really cool, kind of seeing the whole backstory and, like you said, just like imagining what this would look like, would have looked like before. Um, but yeah, that's the cue for the chairlift. Yeah, I love the like. I just think it just looks fantastic. I think it looks really, mm -hmm. really good, and I'm just like proper getting engrossed in it as well. And when I'm on the kind of like the guest level and like just walking around, I'm really getting engrossed in it and like kind of thinking of the story and everything, and like obviously what happened here. And yeah, just really immersive and well done. And yeah, great job. Every single time I see this, every time without fail, I think of Shrek. Every time. <laughs> Me too. Me too, Welcome man. To you're, you're not alone. Such a perfect town. Yeah, great. What honestly, one of my favourite films. I love Shrek. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we have this carousel here, really nicely placed. Uh, that's one thing that I struggle with. Is when I did Oasis Falls, I had a big, wide, open, expansive area, and I thought, could I put a ride in it? And then I did it, and then it didn't look right. But how mm -hmm. Welfare has done this here, and he's put this carousel in the middle, and it just looks so well done as well like kind of just with the queue line as well and just a little bit of light theming and decorating around it and yeah just looks great breaks up the wide open expansive path yeah great job yeah it looks that. great for sure so we've got another flat ride over here that's really well hidden as well because of like kind of, again because of the theming and everything and the lights and the carriage yeah Again, really nice. I can see a coaster, and I can't work out how we get to the coaster. Yeah, um, it looks like it's going to be through this building. Yeah, sure. Um, it must be. Yeah, that must be the oh, exit, because people, yeah, people are walking there. down that way. Right. Oh, hang on. So we have Wyvern's Revenge. So Wyvern mm -hmm. obviously being type of dragon. So nice little nod there to dragons. So I like that fencing there, using yeah. that roof trim that is a fence on that side. Unique, original again, using the <laughs> portcullises just there. So let's walk down here. Um, you're so much better at pronouncing stuff than I am. I am not at all. Yeah, you're so much better with coasters than I am. So there you go, we balance each other out, it's fine. Right, so we have the Wyvern's Revenge. So it's a dragon kiddie coaster. I don't really think this is obviously aimed at kids um, so much because I think this is the main attraction of the park. And I think the stats and the G-Force is kind of like almost allude to that, that it's not going to be your gentle kind of kiddie ride. But let's go for a ride on this. Enjoy, everybody.
So there we have Wyvern's Revenge. So Michael, what were your thoughts? Yeah, I think it was good. It wasn't as intense of a ride as I was expecting for the G4 stats, but I will say I think the only reason the G4 stats are where they're at is because of quick turns like that one, um, because it is such a long train. Um, you kind of have to make the turns a little more wide, so that's why the lateral G forces are a lot more. But I thought it's like a co it's a really cool ride, like especially the um, you got like the two lift hills aspect of it a little bit. Um, and then, I mean, just the theming back here, too, is really nice. Because it seems like it's telling a little bit of a story, which is also really cool. Yeah. yeah for me, that is what's really grabbed me, is, is the story element of it. Is the whole theming and the story, and you've got the dragon here. Now, I wonder where the other dragon is, because part of the story was that one of the dragons was killed, but the witch had still got two more. So obviously, there's the one, there's the one dragon there. So I wonder, as we go around the park, will we see the other one? as well but yeah could, sorry go on no i was just saying could that have been the dragon that the king killed because he killed one of the dragons right yeah so he could this be part of the story of so could this be kind of the story of him killing one of the dragons maybe. and also dying in the process maybe that yeah potentially we'll go with it well fair you'll have to let us know but unless we itself, see another dragon <laughs> yeah unless yeah if we see another dragon we know we're wrong <laughs> <laughs> or that yeah. you were right and i was wrong uh Ooh, great transfer ride. track yeah does it actually go into something as well no just just an optical illusion but yeah really nice ride the only thing i would say is this one last section here for me Oof, that was yeah. just way too i would i would get rid of that completely and have it come around here and just have a big break run coming literally from that bit coming down here because this just little loop here was just way too tight and that's potentially yeah. even where the g-forces were coming from but i mean besides that it, it's a fantastic job really well implemented great storytelling yeah i really enjoyed that i think that was fantastic mm -hmm. totally so, agree um, i'm just gonna there you go michael you didn't see anything all right I don't, I don't know what you're I talking about, man. We're ghosts. So exactly, mate. We can do what we want. <laughs> it's my spotlight. I'll do what I want. <laughs> yeah, there you I'm go. I'm controlling That's the camera. <laughs> yep. So as we come down here, I just want to make sure that we don't miss anything inside this area as well, just before we hop over into the final area. So yeah, mm -hmm. I just love all this castle area here, obviously where the king yeah. lived. I am getting very big Shrek vibes as well. <laughs> Uh, yeah let's come through shine here. your shoes wipe your <laughs> face <laughs> <laughs> i want to go and watch shrek now i mean shrek one of course the first one yeah the not the other ones yeah yeah, yeah. i love this mm -hmm. and again here as well just with a shot built in to that haunted house as well just this is ace just the theming all around here just really well done so what else have we got here we've got some more shops just inside the tents We've got a queue line here. What is this for? We walk past the jester. What? What? Oh, it's a teacups. With people queuing for it. That's a first. Michael, there's people on the teacups. There's and more than like four them, people on it. And they look some like of them they're don't having have fun. kids. <laughs> they look. Oh, kids. 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 Oh, they all have kids. They all have kids. One of them they didn't have kids. kids. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> But yeah, really nicely implemented. Once again, just the decoration around. Yeah, great job. Once again, really nicely themed. So let's come out the exit here. We've got the windmill here. Don't see many windmills in Planet Coaster. Mm -mm. Not gonna lie. Despite the fact that the piece is in the game, it's not used very much, is it? Really? So. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it looks great, though. It does look really And I love nice. this little, little like, witch hut right here. Yeah, that's one of the in-game blueprints, but, if I mean, it's perfect for what it is. Perfect for the theming that it was going mm -hmm. for. There's a couple of in-game blueprints around here, but just been implemented so well. I honestly don't want to miss anything here. I don't want to miss a thing, as Ava Smith would say. Don't um, want to miss anything. Don't ever do that ever again. <laughs> I know, I can't sing, and I started, and then I realized I'm just going to embarrass myself, and then I end up embarrassing myself more. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 dragon. Okay, so I was wrong, you're right. Yep, yep, so the two dragons, so here we have, we have Raven's Flight. Now, I believe that will be the final coaster of the park, so for that reason, 
we're not going to go on it just yet. We're going to leave that for a minute, and we'll go on it in a minute. There you go, Michael. How's that for sightline for you? Mm -hmm. The coaster in the background. Looks great. Now we've got the drop tower here. And we're just going to have a walk down here, and we'll come back to this coaster in a second. So we've got the witch's hex. Oh, didn't nice. Oh, I love this little little car ride here. Yeah, let's have a go on this. I actually want to go for a ride on the. Oh, no. That was that was not Wrong the queue for that. Wrong queue, mate. Wrong queue. The Dark Woods. Now, for me, uh, surely this is going to be a dark ride, you would think. So let me just very quickly swap it tonight. And let's have a walk down the queue path. So. Yeah, this feels like it should have been entered at night as well. Just with the lighting. Yeah, for sure. And like the eerie photos on the wall as well. And I love that subtle purple colour. Just as you come round. Yeah, it's very nice. Oh, wow. Lights it up just enough. Oh, oh this is like haunting. This is fantastic. What a station. Yeah, that's amazing. Right, so let's go for a ride on this. Enjoy, everybody.
I am absolutely blown away by that. That was absolutely fantastic. Just like with everything else in the park, just telling the story of the park, you've actually got the witch there. And me and Michael were talking as the ride was going around. And it genuinely felt like it was completely detached from the park, as if we were somewhere else completely. It was mm -hmm. fantastically done. Yeah, great, great ride. Amazing yeah. theming. Well done. Michael, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, that's... Normally when you see a ride that's this long and it's a dark ride, it's got like that um, Haunted Mansion style um, tr cars and not the cat cars. So I was kind of deceived by... <laughs> by that aspect of it but i just remember the first look of kind of seeing that cathedral in the distance was like wow and then if you would zoom in to to where you're kind of looking at right now the a little bit to the left uh, a little bit to the left the track to the left right there yeah so when you kind of go up that hill it's like at nighttime with the with the rain and stuff it literally it just kind of reminded me of like one of the tomb raider games where you're on like this lost island and it's pouring down rain you've got this like rocky rocky cliff that you're on for some reason it just kind of brought me those vibes where i'm like man this doesn't even feel like we're in the same park this doesn't even feel like we're in a theme park it feels like we're on like an ocean side like a uh, cliff or something yeah i 100 really cool. get what you're saying actually yeah i get that didn't feel like planet coaster did it <laughs> not at all and, not and at all i mean uh, if you can if you could t make people think that this is not planet coaster then surely you've, you've done, done your job good. yeah yeah exactly yep. yeah great job that was absolutely amazing so i mean this isn't the exit but i'm gonna come i'm gonna treat it like this i love that you can just kind of like just watch it from there mm -hmm. i love yeah. the i love the architecture here and it was so like it's just so deceiving because you see this outside building and I'm, when you said oh i'm guessing this is a dark ride i'm like like a dark ride in this building and we saw some of the track outside and that didn't look like a dark ride but <laughs> yeah <laughs> did a it, really good job of it's so uh, well deceiving hidden, isn't it? because mm -hmm. you can see it from here and you're like oh it's just this little tiny little ride that we go on and you've got no idea at all just how big and long that ride is the fact that it goes all the way back over there yeah just amazing job so let's just very quickly just finish looking around this area and then we'll head back and go on the coaster so we've got another ride here i love all the theming for all these cues just so well done and then again we've got the witch here as well i'm i'm gonna be honest michael i think this is some of my favorite theming for fairy tale that i've seen in a spotlight yet you know yeah it's really really well done i think mainly because i think because of the story I think mm -hmm. I think the element of the story just added so much to it, and if you read that park description before you come in, and like and obviously remember it and think about it as you're coming into the park, it just really adds to it as well. But anyway, we're coming up to the final ride of the park. Hang on, are we gonna? Thank you. I was just waiting for them to let us past. So, all right, we'll come down here, and we come. Oh. Quite a long queue. Quite a long queue. There we go. Dun, dun, right. dun, dun, dun. So, got a wing coaster. So, let's have a look at the stats for this. I didn't see the name. Oh, Raven's Flight. I did I did see the name. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So, oh, green across the board. Very nice. The G-forces are slightly on the high side, if I'm being honest. But let's go for a ride on it. See how we get on. And I'll see you on the other side. Enjoy, everybody.
So there we have Raven's Flight. So Michael, what were your thoughts? Yeah, so um, I gotta be honest, Welfare. I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed with this one, and I know that sounds bad, but it's like your coasters in the other park we looked at were so good, and I feel like there's just a, a there's just a fair amount that I noticed in this coaster that whether it's going for realism or not, I felt like, um, you know, I felt like you've done better on other coasters. But I will preface this by saying like wing coasters are tough. Like those things are tough to smooth out. Um, but I feel like it went too fast through a lot of the elements and then there are some times where you could tell that there was a pre-made piece that you used and you probably adjusted the track around it so it created a kind of little awkward kind of hump in the track going into or out of that element. Um, like I would have I would have more coaster trains on than three because that's going to slow it down a little bit and there's also twice when you put brakes on a on a curved section and you never really have brakes on a curved section on a coaster like that um and see so yeah, i mean that's just my take like i, I just think this um yeah as i just wasn't wasn't the biggest fan of this coaster overall and i hope that didn't sound too harsh because i know you're capable of making really really good coasters as we saw it in the other part but transfer track <laughs> there you go that that makes it's up all everything. it's all good it's all good this is now the best coaster i've ever seen Press your track. um unfortunately i i'm gonna have to agree with michael on this one i'm afraid um for me personally I, you know that i will be honest i always am i always say that i will be honest in spotlights because there's no point in not being and and the same with michael as well we will always go get try and give feedback where possible now of course michael knows his coasters a lot better than i do but i still have to agree as well that for me that just didn't work we did actually go for two rides on that before we gave the feedback as well so we went for a seat pov and then we went for a track pov because I wondered maybe was one better than the other. And as Michael was saying, it it just requires a lot of smoothing. Now, of course, I get what it was that you were going for with the name being Raven's Flight and you're trying to think of the bird going all over all of this. But even with that kind of theming, I think you could have done this with a different coaster. If I'm honest, I don't mm -hmm. think it really needed to be a wing coaster. I almost think yep. it would have been better to be, I don't know what the type of ride is called, the one that's Galactin from, uh, Galactus from Alden Towers, like the one that used to be air, the one where you can like fly underneath. I think that that coaster would have almost been better, if I'm honest. Do you know which one I mean, Michael? Um, sorry, so repeat that one more time if you would. Like the Galactus. Is it Galactus uh, from Alton Galactica, Towers? Galactica, yeah, that's, Galactica. A, that's a flying coaster. Yeah, I almost think that that may have been better to kind of like give that sensation of flying. And I think that may have actually been a little bit easier to implement as well. Yeah, but because then you yeah. would have felt like a raven, like a bird flying through the through the trees. Yeah, so I, I am sorry that obviously we have kind of like come to the end of the spotlight and we're ending on somewhat of a negative. Hang on, actually, do you know what? We are not ending on a negative because... I know that there was something else in this park that I was looking at earlier on before we started, and it was amazing. So, yeah, apologies about that, but, yeah, for me personally, I, it just didn't work. I love this. Again, I love these little quaint mm -hmm. water features that are around. That That's the kind of thing that I do. It's just like, do you know what? There's a little tiny space. What can I put that water feature? That is, yeah. that is so me. I'm like, the tiniest little gap... Yeah, stick a water feature in it. It'll be fine. But yeah, as you come around here, there is the most amazing water show. So where is it? I think it's like kind of in the entrance way, which I must have already... Where is it? Ah, I know where it is. It's just down here.
Michael, how amazing was that water show? Yeah, I mean, it was it was absolutely beautiful. I mean, the coloring and the lighting, and that's one area in the game that I really honestly haven't worked with much at all is doing water shows or anything triggered like that. And it just... I just blew my mind in terms of how long that must have taken and just how the how to create a show that is that beautiful in the game. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Really, really nice job. And I've left it at night, so we can just have a look at the park as a night POV as well, just before we close out. So some great lighting throughout as well. Some really kind of like different colours going on. So as we come like through the pirate area, like lots of blue and obviously then you've got your stereotypical pirate like kind of yellowy orange as well. Just as we walk down here. Yeah, this looks fantastic. Just yeah, really, here. really well done. Yeah. And I like the like you said, the difference in colours too is really nice. So it's not it's not all the same colour. It kind of stands out as being different. Yeah. Because normally, like with the pirate theme, it's just like almost always a like a one set color of yellow. Tell you what, we did miss this though. Ooh, the fire! I love that, like a little mini volcano look. Love mm -hmm. that. Yeah, great touch with that. But yeah, lighting just looks absolutely fantastic. Let's just hop over the other side of the park, and then we'll give out some closing thoughts. Love this. Oh, that yeah, is this looks beautiful. Great. Yeah, really nicely done. Really tactful as well. Mm hmm. Just really nice, totally warm agree. ambience. And we'll come through to the fairy tale area. And again, yeah, the lighting throughout the entire park, to be honest. The same as uh, Welfare's Park as well, because that one had great lighting. So let's just swap it back today and give out some closing thoughts right so michael what were your thoughts on the park as a whole then yeah i was you know i was kind of like you going in where just kind of seeing the overview of it i was like okay this looks a lot different like it doesn't look to be maybe the quality of his previous one just from the initial shots but as we definitely went around the park like i was really impressed and even though there were some blueprints here and there like they were integrated into the park so well that it was kind of hard to tell that they're even blueprints you know and just the the theming is really well done i mean my favorite part has to be the stations and the mm -hmm. queue lines just how well done those those are um you know i'd say area to improve on i'd say the coasters um you know i just feel like it kind of was a step back on this park um and that's not to say they're bad necessarily or anything it just means that we we really enjoyed or i know i, I know i did and i think you did as well the coasters in the previous park on were just really really well done um and so that'd be my only area of critique would be working on um you know the the coaster aspect whether it's layout or whatever it might be to kind of you know, just improving that area a little bit. But overall, I mean, absolutely love the park. And, you know, you can't really compare the two parks because they're so different. And that's what amazes me about how Welfare has built this one is he's gone from ultra realism, not much theming, to incredible theming. And it just, it seems like, like it's just really impressive to be able to do both of them at this level. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I know he has got a third park lined up as well. Now, I have no idea what the third park is. And he said that he's got it ready and it's ready to go up on the workshop. Oh but my he hasn't <laughs> said what it is until he wanted us to have a look at this one first. So, yeah, I'm super excited to have a look at that. And, Michael, we'll have to uh, come back and, and do that one as well. But, yeah, just to echo Michael's sentiments, just an amazing park. I do feel a little bit bad that I maybe prejudged this before coming in and, and looking at it properly. I, I really should know better after 100 spotlights. But, <laughs> yeah, absolutely yeah, for sure. fantastic park. Michael, three-word park review. Ooh. Um, I was trying to trip you up. I know. And it's like it's funny because we all should know this is coming. So why am I forgetting? <laughs> so, um, um pleasantly okay i can't say it was i've said that before oh my gosh hold on normally i'm quicker on my feet feet than this um uh <laughs> ex, ex <laughs> excellently themed park 
Did I say that right? Yeah, that'll do. That'll know. do. Okay, that'll do. Gosh, this is like my worst, worst effort at a three-word park <laughs> review. Sorry, Welfare. Um, this was... Man, I'm, I should have known that was coming, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say I uh, loved the storytelling, to be honest. <laughs> People probably got bored of us waffling ages ago, to be honest. But yeah, yeah what probably. a park. Really enjoyed this one. Mm-hmm. Great job, Welfare. Cannot mm-hmm. wait to see your next park. I should have said this at the start, but uh, I mean, I think everybody knows, to be honest. Of course, Michael is an amazing YouTuber, uh, creator, mm-hmm. builder, so make sure and go and subscribe to him as well. His link will be down below. As his link in every video, I put his and Tommy's and Plips and Moomin's links in all of my videos because I obviously respect and value them all so much and they're like such good friends. But yeah, make sure and go and subscribe to him. Thank you ever so much for watching, everybody. I've had an absolute blast. Great job, Welfare. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you ever so much, Michael, for coming as well. I've really enjoyed having you along as always. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. No problem at all. And I will see you for the next park that Welfare does as well, where we will be spotlighting this <laughs> third park. So, yeah, looking forward to that. But take care, stay safe, look after yourselves, and I will see you all in a couple of days for another Planet Coaster Spotlight. Bye, everybody. Say goodbye, Michael. Bye.